Welcome to Greenwood Bonsai today and today in the studio I'm going to be doing some early spring pruning on this large specimen Japanese maple multiple trunk clump style bonsai. Now obviously this tree is a very advanced specimen uh, bonsai it's been worked on over several years. In recent years the growth of this has just been let to grow uh, it's had a little bit of pruning on the apex uh, middle of summer last year but now the growth on it needs chasing back a little bit more uh, at this time of year we can it's a little bit late I probably should have done this about a week ago we've had a bit of burst of warm weather which has pushed the trees on quite quickly here in the UK but now at least at this stage we can see where all the buds are we can see which twigs have got vigor which have less vigor and it's a kind of good time to do some pruning on this to try and bring the tree back in to try and get rid of some of the long internodal growth that we have on this tree uh, here around at the back of the composition there's an awful lot of long growth coming off here it's been allowed to allowed to get too long so it's particularly in important to shorten this back to balance the vigor and gain control over the tree so the things we're going to be doing to this tree today we're going to start shortening it back particularly on that back section it's uh, it needs doing and i've also been looking at the front of the tree and whenever you've got a tree in your collection even a tree of this sort of age and quality you've got to be constantly re-evaluating it always striving to try and make it a little bit better every time i work on a tree in the studio if i can tweak it i can alter something just make it a little bit better it uh, it's more beneficial uh, in the life of the tree and as the tree gets restyled and looking at this it was potted with a front in here towards you guys and you'll notice from that front this second trunk here disappears a bit more behind this first trunk so from a front where you are I'm contemplating bringing it bringing it round a bit more with a front let me just have a look with a front perhaps a bit more like that so then this secondary trunk appears from behind this primary trunk we can see this a little bit more it doesn't have a lot of bearing on the rest of the tree it does mean this root comes out a little bit more on this side which isn't necessarily a bad thing but it means that that trunk isn't hidden it does mean that there's a little scar on this trunk here from years ago it's a little bit more prominent so I might just carve that down a little bit so you don't see it from the new front there's a little bit of root work to do obviously it's got a really large nibari on this tree from this side to that side measures about 21 inch across so we've got a little bit of root work to do we can get a root hook in and comb this out a little bit more it's in quite a shallow pot and it's almost been planted too high in this shallow pot we've got surface roots here look fine roots that are coming out a bit too high up and if i turn it round to the back when it was previously potted which i didn't previously pot it but when it was previously done you can see this section here is quite proud in this pot so it'd be nice to try and this should have be combed out a bit more to get more of a chamfer across here and make it look neater so there's a bit of remedial work to do in that section so I'm going to start off by pruning back some of the long sections of growth and then we're going to slide it out of the pot and see if we can't repot it um, just a mild repot obviously it is a little bit in leaf a mild repot alter that front uh, most probably into the back into this pot or we have got a couple of other options we might try it in yeah. so initially when we start off pruning uh, foliage like this for instance let's just start off with a couple of sections in here to show you and the tools we're using for this we're using a pair of RS scissors which is my preferred bonsai tool scissor for this sort of work we've got a small spherical edge concave pruner and then we've got the small narrow headed concave pruner particularly useful for intricate work on this tree at this time of year 
So let's just go in and have a look at something like this. So we're always getting, trying to get shorter internodes on this tree and this tree has been allowed to get a little bit long in recent years. So here, let's just have a look, you've got a branch coming out here, we've got a side branch here, another one here, a couple of buds here, then we've got an internode here that's about two inches long to the tip where we've got five shoots. So this is a quite a bit of a club of foliage here at the tip, you're much better cutting it back to here and growing these finer shoots out. And again here, this one below, this tip here, come back to here and then shorten this long one back like that. As we go to this next one, now this one here, there's a little bit of die back on here. This has obviously been pruned to here before and then you can see it's died back along that branch. So if it wasn't for that die back, you would take that back to here and leave that branch. But that die back, we don't really want that on the tree. So let's come in with a concave pruner. We'll take that back neat like that and then we'll shorten back these long internodes like so. And if we come further up to this next section, I'm going to shorten these longer internodes back. And then just here, again, back to here. And then this long one. I'm going to leave a little bit of length on that to there. As we come further around here, we're just going to nip these back a little bit always coming back to these shorter finer growth a little bit of dead growth here and here and we can just trim that at the same time so just in a few minutes look this section in front of my hands we've trimmed that back brought it back in a little bit more so let's continue that work as we go around the tree taking back these long internodes like so and here we've got a shoot there that's coming up coming crossing through coming out here look so that's actually this little shoot here. We can cut it back to there, get rid of that completely. And then this top section here, again, let's just shorten back those long internodes back into here. Take the little dead piece off. This bit's growing up too much. Same with here. Let's shorten these back like this. As we work our way down, there's another branch that's sort of interfering here and crossing over. It's actually this one here, it's coming from that back branch. So I'm going to shorten that all the way back to there. Let's get rid of that, like this. we we'll shorten this one back, like that. And this one's crossing through, take it back into here, shorten these back. Now can you see this one here, that's coming out, it's quite thick, coming out here, and then growing straight up, and a stub there. That's not a very attractive branch at all so we want to be coming in here with a narrow concave pruner look and taking that unattractive branch back all together like that just neat just neaten that up like that and again these longer sections shorten it to here this bit and this one back to a bud like that so a fairly good trim and in just in space of five minutes or so if you look at it against the white background all this section here we've now got rid of a lot of the long internodes it had we can continue to continue to do that to the rest of the tree let's try a little bit around this back edge while you're here with the camera rolling now this was really quite um quite too thick here down into this section this is very heavy same with this section here. We're better shortening this back all the way into here with a concave pruner like that. And then coming in here and just shortening this growth back like this. And then on this top shoot to here, shorten this back down to here going in a bit too much this is coming down off that next branch up so let's get rid of that this one this branch is actually coming off this branch over here so this shoot here wants to come all the way back to that first bud and then this one I like to keep my maples trimmed back fairly tight you know and having 
because this has been let grow for quite some time it's just definitely ready for this sort of work now and we do this first because the eventual size of this tree has a bit of a bearing on on the size pot so at the moment it kind of needs a pot this sort of size I've got a couple of pots we might use but they are smaller so once I've trimmed the tree it might go into one of the smaller pots it might go back into this one it doesn't really matter either way as long as we get it into a pot that suits it this little branch in here that's just died off altogether look in there so that's not an issue but we can trim it off and a little bit of die back here on this branch a little bit here this one here is growing up too much there's a couple of little stubs and these little narrow headed concave pruners are ideal for this sort of work but we can get in there and do and again here look we've got this branch here coming out here splitting into two it's quite a nice branch this one here that's the same sort of thickness there's a stub here it's not a particularly attractive branch it's just got this bit of growth on it here and this piece this one is a nicer branch so that section there we can get rid of that now it will allow space for this one which we can shorten back and the same with this one like that and then this one here this is also a bit ugly from a previous prune here so that we can shorten back like so so we're being quite systematic in the way we deal with this tree just going through it step step by step stage by stage cutting back to a bud can you see here where it splits to two this internode here from there to here about two and a half inch long is never going to bud along that section there it could potentially bud from here and it's budding from here so that long section we don't need so again we can shorten that back and look at the difference that's made in a few minutes of all that growth that was at the back that was untoward and it was all too too hairy and unkempt and a little bit of pruning some of these little stubs we can just tidy up we will put some wind sealant some lac balsam on these when we've finished the entire prune but it's made such a difference to the back of this tree already it's just a matter of working our way around reducing this back you can see here on this section a similar sort of procedure there's probably an hour's worth of trimming on this so we're not going to show you everything but we are going to come back and show it you when i have finished pruning it so i'm just going to carry on working my way around trimming back these long internodes and then we'll come back we'll show you it pruned and we'll have a look at the uh, at the roots and we'll get it repotted for you okay we just spent about an hour pruning this maple we showed you a little bit of it before and uh, this was the existing front towards you now we're going to rotate the front to more this sort of angle and if you remember we've got an awful lot of growth on this right hand side round here at the back of the tree this has come back really nicely nice and tight foliage now we've got rid of a lot of the long internodes so it took me quite some time but now we've got the branch is a lot more thinned out and uh, more compact looking ready for the next stage so the next stage is to get it out of the pot and do a little bit of work on these surface roots but here you can see it just against a nice plain background to show you the difference it's made just by pruning it with a pair of scissors so we've just got this out of the pot now working our way around you can see the dark areas of nibari here these were covered up by the soil so the soil level was right up into here and then by using a root hook gently one of these nylon bushes and also just a stiff uh, house brush for managing to uncover this section down here if we just turn it around a little bit you can see on this side all this was under cover and then we've got some little surface roots that come in too high up we're taking these off just to help tidy this up some of these that are crossing over 
and working our way out to the edge to expose more of this beautiful Navari. This moss that's on it here, again with a, like a nylon bush, we can just scrub that off carefully and get this exposed before we go on to the repotting stage. So a little bit more around this side, these little roots here need to come off this one. This one is quite a juvenile root, just coming along with this one that's not needed so that will be that will be cut out and we'll leave these underneath it so there's a little bit of remedial work here to do that we're just working away through now and uh, then we'll get it potted Once we've carved that away, just put some cut paste on just to help to seal that cut, promote healing and good callousing of scar tissue on that. We've got rid of that knuckle that was on it before. You can see around here there's been some on this, this cut before a few years ago. Some cut paste on here and if you just peel this off look this old stuff you can see the the callus in here where it started to heal really well and then this cut paste it's left around the edge you can pick off with your fingertips so that's that started to heal in really well I didn't make that cut that was probably done a few years ago but it's not dissimilar to that section that we've just done so you can see how it heals so now from the front we've got rid of that ugly lump the base we found quite a bit we're just going to tidy this up a little bit more uh, we'll go around it with some with some cut paste on a few of these these larger cuts that we made on the larger ones we'll use a bit of cut paste on the slightly smaller ones we'll use a little bit of, of lac balsam but we'll get those pasted up out of the way another one in here look if you wet your fingers when you put cut paste on and it doesn't stick to your fingers it just sticks to the tree it's much easier easier to apply a little bit like that so we'll have a little tidy up of the base and uh, then we'll come back and we'll see what pot we can get it into so to get rid of the, some of this dirt around the edge and some of this moss we've done it with a brush we can, I've got a little bonsai pressure washer that we use so areas like this it will just start to clean it all up so it's a little bit noisy but I just thought I'd show you me using it on this sort of section here so it's quite an, it's quite a fine jet so be careful not to hold it too close on um, thin bark trees like on azaleas or something it's quite useful but if you hold it too close you could literally just write your name in the in the bark with it so you've got to be very careful with it so a little bit of distance away to start with Okay, so first stage with this tree was trimming it back. We've trimmed all the canopy and the foliage back. Second stage was finding the roots and we've uncovered more roots with a brush, with a jet wash. So now that's ready. This is the pot it was originally in. It's a 26 inch pot. So it's got a lot of length to it, but it's, it's excessive. It's particularly excessive now that the tree has been reduced back to where it needed to be. So this was the original front and we said that we were going to alter the front to make it a bit more like this sort of angle. Yeah. So I've tried it back into this original pot just so you can see 
what it looks like and think it's a bit shallow and a bit too long. So now we're going to take it out of this pot, we're going to try it into a, another pot that we've got in mind. Right, so this is the new pot and this is a handmade pot by Petra Engelke. My stepmother made this pot. Uh, it's about a 25 year old vintage pot. This side here is showing a bit more green with a patch of grey on this side but there's a little glazing perfection here. Not a, not a big thing but just a little bit noticeable. So we were looking at the pot we decided that this side is probably going to be the nicest because it's a nicer tone of the green with the grey. Uh, I mentioned that other pot, I got the size wrong, I said it was 26 inch, that last pot was uh, 36 inch and this one here is 28 inch across. So it is a little bit shorter, gives us a bit more depth, obviously it's a, quite a spectacular base to the tree, it can cope with this depth of pot. Uh, this tree is now just currently sat in the bottom of the pot so it wants to be raised up a little bit because the soil level wants to be down here where these roots are so it's going to be raised up a little bit more so it sits a bit like that but a bit higher in the pot so we're going to go with this as the front of the pot now the trees come in the length of this one it's long enough the other one would be over length and also too shallow uh, now we've uncovered these roots we think it looks a lot nicer in this pot and the colors of it are really beautiful against the tones of the Acer Pomatum as it comes into leaf and as the colour changes in the leaves through the season. So the stage now we'll take the tree out, we'll put some wires into the pot, some mesh into the pot. We're not going to show you that, you've all seen me do that before and then we'll come back at the end and show you with it all planted and looking, uh, looking at home in its new pot.